Jigs, anybody that follows us on this show, on our channel, any of our social media knows that we throw jigs here and there all the time. Here and there. And Every day. And over there and over there. And <laughs> there. <laughs> ice out to ice in. From one inch of water to I think I have successfully pulled a fish out from 55 feet is the deepest we've caught a fish on a jig. I think, I don't know. 50 maybe? I'd say 55, 60. All right, 55, 60 on just a skirted jig. Now, different sizes, different skirt sizes, different hooks, like the whole nine yards. But jig is a jig. We're talking about skirted jigs tonight, friends. We have a lot to cover for every aspect of this because the idea is we're going to try and make it so that anybody that's kind of <sighs> him and hawing or on the line of, of confidence levels for just throwing a jig in general, I'm hoping that we can provide enough insight as to all the different head types, different trailers, what structure they're ideally suited for and what they will still work for. Cause it's not just for one thing. It can work for several things, different trailers for different times of the year, cadence, color selection, like the whole nine yards. And then we'll lightly talk about gear uh, as well, but really it's a lot about the jigs, the trailers and how we're fishing them. This is the primary focus because like everything else is kind of like, there is no right or wrong way to it, if you will. Not really. I mean, everybody would know, like, if you're throwing a rod that's way too light for a jig, you're going to know that on the first cast. You'll probably know it just from looking at the rod. Yeah, you're so, going to pick it up, and it's going <laughs> to look like this ice rod. It's going to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to pick it up. I mean, this is actually pretty As stout just, little ice rod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with those. I get those for my kids for Christmas. I'll catch you later. No problem. Oh, yeah, dude. So let us get into it, because... There's a lot to discuss. How many times have I said that now? All right, so jigs. Jigs. There is a whole host of great companies that make great stuff. There's lead. There's lead-free. I think there's tin, like tin bismuth is uh, one of the main ones that's lead-free. You've got your tungsten. You've got your tungsten resin. Got steel. They got brass. They got, they got everything. Oh, Pretty yeah. much any type of metal there is, there's a jig made out of it. <laughs> yeah, and each one has its pros and cons and especially different price points, too. That's the biggest thing. When we're talking about jigs, I would think that the most versatile one that comes to mind for most people when they go to buy and probably the most com commonly available one is either going to be a swim jig or a football jig. There are many, many, many other types. And that's what I want to try and discuss tonight. So first and foremost, let's talk about head types. And by all means, as you have questions, throw them out and we're going to address them on the fly. We're not going to try and talk a bunch and then come back and answer 30 questions and then talk a bunch. I want to keep this going as smoothly, but timely to questions and comments as possible. So keep them coming. All right. So first up, football jig. This should be pretty self-explanatory. The head looks like a football shape. The idea being behind a football jig is the damn thing is supposed to stand. Wait a minute. What are we doing? Oh, uh, you want me? Okay. Hey, so remember how we were talking about doing like multiple fun things? Bam. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> well, I can't show it off. It's got to be in the water. But Boom. Well, here. I'll do we it. got... The one I take up. And I spray painted the back side of it so that baits will actually show up. We got the second camera going. You can't see us for crapping the other one in the corner, but that's okay. Perfect. All right, that is a football jig. Looks like a football, right? Pretty self-explanatory. The idea behind a football jig, it is phenomenal for just straight up bottom contact fishing, and it's supposed to stand. So your bait will stand up and present itself. Downside to it, it drags everything. So if you're fishing that around any sort of vegetation, it grabs everything <laughs> there is no exception to what it will grab but it will climb over rocks pretty well for the most part but not like not as good as a ball jig we'll say like i feel like i have better luck fishing just a regular ball jig around rocks but a ball jig doesn't stand so football jig helps it'll get up on top of a rock and stand as it's kind of going along which is the benefit of that comes in every freaking metal that you can think of so if you're not into the tungsten game because of overall cost, essentially, not to worry. There are plenty of other companies out there that make lead-free versions of that as well uh, because there are plenty of states, like most of New England, that has a ban on lead jigs. So there's that. Uh, so we have that one. Then I would say that the next most common one, which we didn't pull down, where are they? Archie has? No, I was going to say swim jig. Oh, swim jig, yeah, no. Up there, that middle bin. Wait, no. Yep. 
bear with me one second. There's one jig I forgot to get out. But swim jig, grass jig, I don't know, man. You can call it a number of things. The, the intent behind this head design is to be able to slip through vegetation with ease, especially on the swim. It has a very... Well, it's a swim jig, right? It's got um, a very kind of like minnow-like profile to the face. So longer, slender, pointier, so it can kind of blade through things and just slip through cover. Add in the brush guard, that also helps it. So you can now move that bait much more easily through heavy vegetation. Again, moving it, it's a swim jig, right? You can work it just kind of like a flipping jig if you want in the sense of just pitch that into thick grass. But I found that swim jigs, for the most part, at least the ones that I buy, tend to be a slightly lighter head. You're talking like quarter ounce to three eighths ounce, sometimes three sixteenths in the middle. But it, you know, you can tell it's got that more slender profile. Most of them have those uh, 3D eyes molded into the head or glued in, what have you. So you can give it a much more minnow like presentation. I don't even remember who the hell made that. Oh, what is lead? <laughs> I don't remember what brand that is. I'm curious. That's a stout ass hook on it though. So that that's kind of like a more specialty head, if you will. I mean, there might be another one we have so then there's two different size styles there's that one that's kind of like the working man's uh jig from beast coast fishing but then the other they have other swim jig heads no that's perfect that's exactly what i was going to talk about next then you got some beefier ones still the same principle but it is a like swimming grass jig i gotta swap that it's got a more bullet-like profile to the head, but it does the same damn thing. The idea behind this is it's supposed to easily part through vegetation so you can easily swim it through it and come through without getting snagged up on everything. My opinion, by far the two most common jigs you can find anywhere. So to recap, I'm going to keep going back and forth on this. First one, when you're talking football jig, that's bottom contact. It's going to present your bait in a standing orientation or position. If you're talking about a swim jig, that is really ideally meant for just straight up swimming it and it will go through obviously open water without any problems but you can also swim it through a pretty substantial amount of vegetation without it getting stuck on anything so there you go you can fish those on the bottom too if you're trying to work it through a lot of grass without trying to tear it up with like a football jig you could throw like an archy head on or you could throw that's what i was gonna get to next was the archy head the archy head yeah yep. or you could throw a swim jig and you could really work it down in the grass yep just know that because of the profile, that size, that shape of the head, it's not going to stand whatsoever. I gotta, it's going to be an easy way to swap these. Keep it moving, quick dragging and quick popping, and, but it will work its way through the grass a lot easier than a football head will. Yep. You want to take on Arky head? I'll just keep pre presenting them. All right. It's kind right. of fun. All right. So beyond those two, now we're starting to get into kind of jack up night. Jack of all trades and more very specific presentations. I'm not going to cover every single freaking head there is out there, but we're going to get pretty damn close. This is going to cover the vast majority of head styles out there. So next up will be an Arky head style from Beast Coast Fishing. These are the only ones that I throw. This, these is, uh, sorry, these are his Vanquish jigs. This is kind of a cross between, we'll say, football head and grass jig and what it's capable of doing. It's kind of got a wider head. Nice flat backside to the head, but it's still a slim, slender profile. This is when, like, honestly, one of the most clutch jigs I own for fishing a lot of places here in the Northeast, especially our kettle ponds, because you will have areas where in one spot you can cast to a rock pile, you can cast to thick vegetation, and then you can cast to areas where the two of them are mixed. And especially in areas where things are mixed like that, where you want your jig to kind of at least present in a standing presentation, Arky Head is where it's at. That is the jig that I have the vast majority of. Maybe. I think I actually have more football jigs. But if <laughs> they're pretty close. They're well, 1A, 1B. It's only because we throw so many, lose so many goddamn yeah, football jigs. Truth. <laughs> I mean, we like fishing rocks. You're going to lose a lot of jigs when you fish a lot of rocks like we do. Mm -hmm. uh, but an Arky Head kind of does everything. It's not the best for swimming through grass. It's not the best for getting it to stand or work over rocks. But it does a pretty damn good job of both. And that's the intent behind that design, or at least my interpretation of it and how I use it. And it is damn effective for doing exactly that. So that's the benefit of an Arky jig. There actually might be a different name for that. Hmm. Doesn't like matter. This? Yeah. Vanquish? 
Well, no, that's Beast Coast specifically, oh. but like Arky Head, I think, is the kind of generic overall broader term. Well, I mean, it's like an arc. It's like it's almost like a spade shovel when you put it down, <laughs> kind of, and it just kind of like slides comparison. over the ground instead of like diving into it. I almost just hooked the shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. <laughs> it just kind of because it's it's yeah. I can't really talk right now, but it's, it's okay. Take your time. <laughs> It's almost like a shovel head, like how it, it's kind of like <laughs> go back in front a of the little camera, like a sled. <laughs> I know it's over here and whatever, but um, when you're coming across ground, it likes to just slide. Like it's a good good jig for. I can't. That's a lot of jig dragging. Jib, <laughs> it's a good jig for dragging yes. if you're dragging somewhat clean bottom, like sand. Yep, and that kind of mucky kind of leaves and yeah. schmutz. You get that that spongy layer on top of the firm layer in a lot of our kettle ponds here in the northeast. I, I would assume pretty much everywhere, really. Uh, you run into that kind of crap, That's that head style slides through pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. I like that because of its versatility. Uh, but I would not recommend throwing this in a big rock pile, though. You will lose this thing in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> it does like to get pinched really easily, is what it is. Dale. Bass feeding heavy on shad here in North Carolina. Destroying topwaters won't touch a swim jig. Thoughts? Use topwater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the tough thing about fishing jigs for me. If they're really feeding up, that's about the only time I really won't fish a jig. With some exceptions. It depends on what depth you're working. And we've had quite a few days where we've done really, really well fishing lighter jig heads, like quarter ounce or three eighths ounce. Rarely do we go down to quarter ounce. I have sometimes, but usually three eighths is fine. And then I'll be really, really particular about what jig trailers I'm going to throw. Twin tail grub or swim bait are going to be my go-tos. And swim bait, for obvious reasons, ends up being the best choice. I think it's bit a lot more consistently. And even though it can have a really good fall, I don't feel that it can match the overall action and profile that you get out of a twin tail grub. And I seem to get bit by that, like especially smallmouth, if I know they're feeding up, but they're really not in like crazy, crazy deep water, that I can throw either just a regular spider jig or what we've been doing a lot recently is the open water sniper from Beast Coast and then throwing a twin tail grub on the back of that. Just cut the hula part off if that's all you have is hula grubs. And just that crazy dance. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, Dale, but for others, the twin tails... They dance hard, and you know it looks. There, there's a lot going on behind that action on the fall, and on a lighter jig, say a quarter ounce. And I specifically bought a ton of quarter ounce open water snipers from Beast Coast specifically for these instances, uh, or three eighths ounce. You slow that down, and then it gives them time to really see it. One, not because of the slower rate of fall, but also all that action that you get from a twin tail grub. You could also, yeah, perfect. You could also use just a regular, just a regular grub, single tail. Um, you could cut the back off of other baits too. Like you could cut the butt end off of a friggin' lizard and just use that in the tail alone. Like that could be good enough. But that's what we end up tending to do. That might be deep enough. When you tie that on, do you want me to get the second rod so we can like bounce between the two? It's not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, so there's that. I'll answer another question while waiting for him. Oh, hey, Wicked Sportsman. What's going on, buddy? Dave was just going to say, probably don't need much more than an Arky head or some variation of it. I mean, really, if you wanted one jig to do everything, an Arky head is going to do it for you. You could load up just on Arky heads. Again, it's not going to be the best for any one particular uh, presentation or area, but it will work for you in pretty much everything. Can't recommend that head enough. Um, you were going to tie that one on. Why are they Arky? Dave, I don't know. It's a great question. You said something about Kansas or Arkansas. Oh, wait. Oh, I always thought they were started by Stanley Jigs in Arkansas. Why they are Arky? Oh, my bad. I missed that first part. Sorry. Uh, ooh. You know what? Now I'm curious. I want to look into that. Could be. Uh, <laughs> Brian, about a little Magnum. Hold that thought. We're going to that one next. We're going to start getting a little more specialty jigs. Ooh, yep. uh, you're probably going to slow it way down. Really fast. Yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a second. Uh, Dan, what do you use for a swim bait trailer? Honestly, I don't know, like 10 different swim bait trailers. It depends. I would say Kytex 
by far the most common things. Uh, spark shad sometimes. A whole bunch like of different spark kytex. Shads. Spark shads are really good. I'm trying Five to think. Inches. Um, <laughs> Jackal? Is that the one I'm thinking of? They're right outside there. I might go grab them in a second. Um, Is that like the super perchy looking one? The really thin one. No, yeah, Jackal makes that really perchy looking one, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. It's one second. It's literally five feet over here. They're like... I was right. Jack Jackal Rhythm Waves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those ones. And I like those. It's a very slender profile, but it's got a nice, slow, like, kind of kick roll to it. Very versatile bait, but the problem is they're really thin, so they tend to tear very easily on you. Um, if we're talking about other... Well, all right, we'll, we'll get into it more later, because that is something we're going to cover a lot in depth, so I don't want to get too, too far sidetracked. <laughs> David, swim jigs don't work. No one should ever throw them. Please. Shh. There you go, Dale. Yeah, try the lighter jig head. Jim, I lose a lot of nice Beast Coast jigs in the rocks we have here in New Hampshire, both shallow and deep. They fall in between rocks and won't come out. What's best? So, three to, things. To get them out? Yes. Do this a whole bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> do the old snap, the, uh, what do they call it? The bow and arrow snap little duber thing that we do. And yeah, I don't. Go straight, literally just blow the rock pile up, go over it, and just pop it out. And then they have... Um, those weighted um, knockers, basically. Knockers, yeah, you can make them yourself. So they make little bait knockers. So what you can buy is like one ounce, um, basically like drop shot weights. Throw a paper clip through the pinch, and you can get like the closed, like fully closed, uh, like, like actual line tie drop shots, and throw a paper clip around that paper clip. Put the paper clip on your line and drop it down. And nine times out of ten, it will knock your jig free and get it back. We've we, saved ourselves a ton of money doing that. We were that. using three like ounce. one to between one and two and three ounce, uh, like surf casting weights. Yeah, like the uh, I don't know what the hell they look like. They look like the ball sacks you hang off the back of a big oh, truck. It's a trailer. <laughs> yeah, kind of like those. <laughs> and like one to three ounce, right to like a big snap. Yeah, a big, big snap. And those go on really easy, and those did pretty well. Um, you just literally clip it on your yeah. line. You have your line not super tight and not just loose, just enough where there's like a little bend in it, and you're pretty much sitting straight over the jig where it's stuck in the rocks, and you drop it down, and you'll feel it go thump as soon as it hits the bottom, and you lift up. If it doesn't come off, just kind of snap it a couple times. It'll pull it right out. should. Right, and then if all else fails, I always just go past it. But he's elaborating on his questions. So let's go back to this. What <laughs> what jig won't get so caught? I've done all the snaps and knockers. What head gets caught the least? Ball jig. Ball jig, yeah. The only problem is, again, it doesn't stand. It just rolls right over on itself because it's just a round head. But I have the best luck for getting a ball jig through crazy rock piles over anything else. Or a net head, which I don't understand what it is about that specific design with the way the profile of the head, the way the weight is distributed, where the line tie is, the whole nine yards. But there's something specific about that whole combination about a Ned head that I can snap free out of the rocks by far better than anything else I've thrown. So you could always try and throw something like that, but otherwise, uh, ball jig, that's that's the one I always throw the most. Jig squad, what's going on? Yeah, see? Jig squad knows what's up. Ball head. <laughs> um... Okay, circling back, we got some questions out of the way. So we covered football jig, right? And then swim jig. Now we covered arky. So you've got like straight up open water or rocks standing jig in your football. Your swim jig, which is your heavy vegetation covered jig that slips and swims through absolutely everything vegetation wise. Then you've got your arky head, which is kind of jack of all trades. It does both. Neither one very well, but neither one very poorly either. It's a one jig that does it all. It's a filler so, jig. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, I want to go into some more specialty things and absolutely first thing we have to talk about is the little Magnum. You take over on this for a second. Um, and then I'm going to go and put the thing in the chat cause I forgot to do that. So actually one second before you get into that. So we are going to do the raffle. We're going to give away like a whole smorgasbord of jigs. So whoever ends up being the winner, let's talk. Cause I have a ton of jigs. I'm going to give away like 10 of them and then a ton of trailers. I want to talk to whoever the winner is to specifically understand what colors you would prefer to have and what head styles and weights. I literally have six Plano 3700 boxes full of jigs. 
and I may or may not have another 40 jigs arriving tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> I like jigs. Uh, and then a whole ton of trailers, like the whole nine yards. So let's discuss that. Whoever ends up being the winner, give me one second while he's talking. I'm going to put up all the information for you. You can do the raffles up in the chat. I'll pin it. That way everybody can jump on it. Uh, but we'll say $2 a raffle. There is no limit to how many entries you can do. And we'll actually show the random draw. We'll do it at 9 p.m. So in 28 minutes. Uh, but Little Magnum from Beast Coast. It is a finesse punching jig. This tungsten, <laughs> mind you. Tungsten. It's Is it tungsten or is it It is that? tungsten. It no, is no, tungsten. it's tungsten. This thing is mouse. friggin' cool. <clears throat> you can fish this thing kind of... I mean, it's pretty much like a ball head, but it just punches straight through everything because it has, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but. Do I need to? It's kind of like. Hold on. Boop. Boop. It's almost like a bullet. No, like, a, like, a, like they call it the little magnum. It's like a bullet. It just punches straight through everything. I don't know if you can see that. I'm like way off, aren't I? What? Uh, yeah, come down. Yeah. Hold on. He's trying. He's trying real hard. I can't talk into this thing and then show it all at the same time. It's, trust me, believe me, it's like a bullet. <laughs> um, this thing can punch this thing through some pretty thick stuff. I mean, this is only three eighths, but this thing will work its way through pretty heavy vegetation quite easily. Um, like those really thick lily pad patches that you're trying to throw, say you're trying to get like, I don't know, something Texas rig like a, or even just like a, like a Sanko or anything down through, and it, you just can't get it through. These jigs will punch straight through those overlapping lily pads, like no problem, or just go straight through them depending on how far up you throw this thing. But it's got... Sorry, I forgot to... You were good. Switch it. Sorry. I'm sorry. It has... Damn directional mics. Extremely <laughs> stout hook on that thing. I mean, this is it the same hook as all the other ones? It's a, we're talking, that's a 4 op BKK. If you like fishing stout. any sort of like heavier grass pat, patches, go get yourself so, some little magnums. These things are freaking amazing. And they actually work their way around rocks pretty well, too, for what they are. It's like a, it's like a ball head, really. It's yeah. Like a, it's like a hybrid ball head. <laughs> the other added benefit about a jig like this, aside from the fact that it punches through vegetation like nothing else to use, basically like a Texas rig, all of the weight, 100% of the weight, well, 98% of the weight is in the head. Hang on, swap. Because the bait keeper is not part of the molded head like you would get, say, with a football jig, which, yeah, here. Show those two side by side. So on your standard football jig, regardless of what the material is, you've got the head and then this like neck. There's a groove in the neck where they can put either a rubber band or a wire tie or whatever behind the head to hold the skirt. And then it continues, the, the metal itself continues to come down and then the bait keeper is molded there too. So that's the difference in the head shapes. Now show the bait keepers on these. Do you have a naked Magnum? This is important. I'm going to wait <clears throat> before I continue to talk about this. Yeah. Sorry. He's trying. Give him a second. Okay, there we go. So the football jig, you can tell, you've got the material, the actual metal that's molded for the head for where they tie the you know, rubber band or wire tie for the skirt, and then the bait keeper. All of that metal that makes up the overall weight is distributed between all of that features. So it's kind of nice that it still stands, but not all of the weight is in the head. Then you go to the little magnum, and this is where the magic is in this bait. All of the metal is just in the head. So it absolutely falls head first, and it's got all the weight face first. Like, it's falling dead on, head on. And then it's got two really, really thin wire keeper, uh, wire bait keepers. So you get the benefit of two absolutely incredible bait keepers. And I have zero issue keeping baits on these things. And all the weights in the head. 
So it just punches through vegetation like you wouldn't imagine. It literally is one of the best jigs I've ever used for trying to get through heavy vegetation. Even a 3 8 ounce is freaking insanely good. Um, I pro Actually, I think I fish 3 8s more often than not, uh, but I do use half ounce, yeah. We use both. I, I'd probably <laughs> have an even mix of the two, but... What are you caught on? Oh. I, don't um, I like the 3 8 ounce when I'm fishing heavier vegetation because I like it to kind of fall through a little bit more slowly. Because it gives the fish time to see it come crashing through and then actually track it and follow it down to the bottom if they can't get it along the way. So that's a, kind of one of your other specialty ones. Uh, holy hot damn. We already got two raffle entries coming in. Cool. Thank you, Tammy and Michael. Uh, again, so everybody, I put it there in the chat. $2 per entry. There is no limit to the amount of entries. 603bass at gmail.com. 603bass at gmail.com for PayPal or snoove 603 bass all one word on venmo um or you can do right here in the chat like it doesn't matter to me i, I didn't write in the chat that there's a character limit for comments either one you want to do that and other michael thank you very much michael b and michael c <laughs> so they're they're phenomenal um so what else did you i'm sorry i like didn't hear a word you said while you, you were doing that well it's like <laughs> holding on typing said use it in grass mm -hmm. <laughs> And punching through pads and stuff like that. Any heavier vegetation that you're not going to put a Texas rig through. Yep. Punching jig. <laughs> there are many other slight variations on jig head styles that go beyond these. But for me, I've covered the four absolutely primary skirted jigs you could ever possibly want when you're talking about jig fishing. Pretty much. If we... Oh yeah, if we continue to go down this, we could probably spend another half an hour talking about different head styles, but this pretty much does get the gist of them going. Now, when you're talking about just like regular football jigs, <laughs> the list goes on and on for what you're talking about for uh, materials and weights and what those can have. When we had Sharon on, we were talking about, um, I think we had him on to talk about largemouth specifically, like largemouth fishing tips in the summer, something like that. But he, we were talking about that one point, and when you're using like non-lead metals, you get a much bigger profile because they're nowhere near as dense as say lead or tungsten, and that can actually be beneficial to you in slowing your bait down. So like a three-eighths ounce non-lead jig is going to actually end up pouring a pretty damn big head, especially if they're a little heavy on let's say the tin in their mixture, if it's like a tin bismuth. That can be really good because it's it's a giant head with a lot of uh, with very little weight, so it creates a lot more displacement, and that's going to help it fall even slower. Versus say three eighths ounce tungsten, which is tiny on a football jig head, and that's going to fall pretty damn fast. Might not even stand either because the head is so small and it's a pretty light weight, so I'm not even sure it's going to do that. Things to consider if you really want to go down that road, and that's going to require a little bit of research on your part. Uh, but if you're talking just straight up lead jigs, most of your non-lead jig makers, <clears throat> their 3 8 ounce is going to be the same as like a half ounce tungsten head. It's going to be a give or take. It's going to be about that big. That's yes. So funny. I'm glad you picked that up. Where's the other football head? So you're holding a three quarter ounce. Yeah. Tungsten, and this is a half ounce. You might want. You should go put those up in front of the other camera. And this kind of help paint a better picture of the difference in sizes when you're talking about put the half right next to it. No, so that's three quarter. And then that's the half. Anytime. There you go. Proud of you. Pretty big difference. Actually, shit, that might be three eighths. I have to look at it again. Three eighths. Okay, never mind. We take that back. <laughs> uh, hey, hammer time. What's going on, friend? Um... Any other questions about head styles before we go into a bit of a demonstration? Because it's one thing to talk about what they're good at, but I actually want you to see in the tank what we're talking about for what it does on the bottom. And then we're going to go into jig trailers from there. Uh, oh, and there was actually a really good question from Dave. Do you trim the weed guard down or thin them out at all? Yes. Almost without exception, I will trim my weed guard down unless I'm fishing some really thick vegetation. Sometimes I'll just take it right out. That's something we've been doing a lot of recently, actually. <laughs> Even on our football heads, like working around vegetation. But yeah, it's usually getting hit on the fall or 
within like a couple feet of where the jig landed so you don't really have to worry about much yeah and it's very specific to a body of water we've been fishing and conditions we've been finding and where they've been there, there's a there's a lot of input and variables that came into play to make us decide to throw a giant football jig with no brush guard in grass but we were working within essentially like a three foot window every time we hit that window we got bit mm -hmm. When we didn't hit the window, we were farming out pounds of grass per cast. Literally pounds. Dude, it like, was... It's, you're either coming up with, like, just a little bit on there, or you're coming up with a fish, or you're coming up with freaking 10 pounds of grass on <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. pulling your rod to get up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to bring that back to the camera for one second. So I, I just want to talk about the, the brush guard for one second. So as far as trimming it, I either pull the whole damn thing out, or if I'm going to trim it, if you can peel back, say, one-third of all of those, of just the uh, bristles, that's it. That's all I'll do. The benefit to peeling, to cutting, like, and what I'll do is I'll just take a pair of side cutters or wire cutters, whatever you want to call them, as close as I can get it. And the benefit to that is if I do run into any little bit of vegetation and I don't want to get snagged on it, I still have just enough stiffness in those bristles or the brush guard, that it will still deflect the vegetation. But it's still light enough that even if I get, like, a really gentle, biting smallmouth that's just barely got the hook, I can still set the hook and catch that fish without losing it because the brush guard's deflected everything away before I can get to it. If you're interested, go back, because I don't want to give away his juice. You guys have to work for this one. We had our friend Kyle on the, the last time we did a jig special. I think it was episode 30. For real northern bass talk if you go back there he found a trick that he was doing for his jigs that works phenomenal mm -hmm. phenomenal phenomenal <laughs> for um i keep forgetting just to switch this damn thing a really thin wire or an elastic band you're just gonna give him the juice i told him to go watch the damn thing well they need to know what the hell he's trying to do with it that's true <laughs> <laughs> you have to go watch it. it it's it's seriously like a phenomenal idea to get the best of both worlds um Let's see. Oh, Dan, what rod size do you use for your jig rod? We will cover that. You know what? Instead of putting that at the end, let's cover that now because we have 15 minutes before we end up closing for the raffle. So let, let's cover this and then we'll do trailers because that's going to be, no, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We need to, we need, we'll get to that right after the raffle. <laughs> We have to show, I want to show the difference in heads. All right, so to the test tank. Football head. We talked about how well it stands. This might not be the best example because I think this is a 3 8 ounce head, and 3 8 ounce footballs technically don't always like to stand. Uh, but if you can get it to drag a little bit, if you can get a little skitter pop, if I can bloop. No, poor example. Do we have a half ounce head? Wait, I thought that was the half ounce. This is the half ounce. Why is that not standing? Isn't that the one a, I dropped in it's earlier? Glass and not rocks and dirt and sand. Shut your mouth. <laughs> it's kind of standing, not really at Where's all. Where's that three eight ounce? <laughs> what do I have? Oh, one? it's right here. There's no trailer on it. What is this one? Hold on. What? What's that? That's the one I dropped in. Drop that one, please. Okay. I'm I'm telling you, this is a three eight. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Told you, this is a three eight. Boom. Get away from the... Oh, yeah. Oh, never mind. That's not even leaning against it. It's beside it. So, football jig. Does exactly what you want it to do. It stands. And that can greatly matter for how fish want to attack jigs, we've found. Depending on what they're feeding on and what what they're feeding on are doing that are attracting the bass to come in. Sometimes it could just be, I don't know, like actual crawfish, right? And when they get in defensive mode, they sit back on their butt and the claws go in the air and they're like... Ah, and they get all... Like, try to make themselves look big so they don't get eaten. Or whatever the hell their reasoning is. Uh, or it can look like a little bait fish. <laughs> nosing down, trying to kind of eat along. Um, kind of along the lines of what a shaky head should do for you, right? So, football head. You want it to stand, get a football head. That should be pretty self-explanatory. Show you the difference now between what a football head does and what something like the little magnum does. So, no, 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 you can go ahead and get, get ready to just drop that and have it stand. 
Okay, so football head stands, right? Punches straight down, head first, boom, stands right up. Little Magnum falls head first, punches through heavy cover, great, but look what it does when it hits the bottom. Blech. Falls right over. Come over here. Doesn't stand for <laughs> crap. Now, it is nice. It's a great head because it slides through cover really well, too, so you don't have to just work it, say, like a Texas rig or a punching jig where you're like just trying to actually punch it through things. You can swim that a little bit, too, and it's not too, too bad. Uh, but if you want it to be on the bottom and stand, she don't stand. She falls right over. That head design is not meant to stand. Now, if we go to an Arky head, if we do this right, it should half stand and then roll over. Do you have an Arky head tied on? I don't, but I'll tie one on right now. All right, tie this one on. I told you it was three eights. I looked at it. I confirmed. I was right. Who else we got? Mark, thank you very much. Wait, Mark, uh, Tammy, Michael B, Michael C, Mark, Brian, thank you, and Jim, thank you. Holy crap, you guys are not messing around. <laughs> Don't worry, he's a fast tire. Not with two pound line, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. No. <laughs> Get out of me. Okay. Oh, hell yeah, Jason. What's going on, friend? I'm sucked into a game of... AOE2. Why can't... Help me out. What is that again? It's going to bother me. I can't remember what that is. AOE? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Age of Empire. Oh. <laughs> Got it before you said it. Yeah, see, I know. Um, what, are, what are Matt and JP in South Jersey... All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Boop. What's down there? Uh, oh, little Magnum. Little Magnum. Other side. Oh. Over there. Okay, there you go. Arky, see that? Do it again. Let me get that freaking one out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do it. All right, so Arky head. Stands a little bit, but ultimately rolls over. It doesn't really want to stand. And honestly, that might not even be... I think that's only a 3 8 ounce. Well, math. It's so, technically, if it's from Beast Coast, it's 5 16 and then their half ounce is actually 7 16 There are 16th of an ounce less than what I guess everybody else's is. Like, again, 3 8 and a half ounce are kind of standard. These are off a little bit. <laughs> Jason, waiting for that tank to shatter. It better not. That would suck. No, it won't. So, Arky Head. Is pretty good where it kind of wants to stand, but See? it doesn't there really it stand. Now it's half and half. It's kind of rolling. I wonder if the claws are holding it up. But when it hits, it kind of like like Andrew's talking about because the design of the head, it kind of rolls back, but it does stand for half a second before it comes back down. There it goes. That's how it should. Oh, I wait wrong way. There we go. Beautiful. That's how it should sit. She's a beaut, Clark. Um, you know what would be nice if I actually had. A 3 8 ounce non lead jig, which I think I do over there. Give me one second. Go, I'm trying to think. Think of questions. Bring them up. Well, let me just grab one jig over my shoulder. I'm pretty sure I have one from Gordy right here. Nope, I know where they are. There's a football jig case. Right here. I got them. Ah. Super. That's a three eights. Jesus. <laughs> sure friggin' is. See, I did come prepared, just not entirely prepared with everything being right in front of my face. So this is just kind of Happy birthday, Jason, by the way. For, oh wait, is his birthday? I don't know. I don't know if it's today or if it was yesterday, but Happy early today belated birthday. Got you covered for whatever day it is. <laughs> I think it was his birthday. I don't know. <laughs> You're going to feel like a jackass if you didn't get that right. <laughs> um, what do you want to do with this? Tie this one on? Yeah. Well, you know what? Just drop it in. I'm curious to see what it'll do. So just to further demonstrate difference between weight heads and styles, this is a non-lead J. It's 3 8 ounce, and it should fall freaking slow and still stand because even though it's light, it is a very broad-sized head. Just like that. That was beautiful. 
That was beautiful. I Grab caught, that. I caught my PB on that jig, just not that color. Grab that. Por favor. I'm curious if it'll help stand if we actually throw a trailer on it. If the flotation of the plastic will help it stand up a little bit better. Maybe. Let's find out. Yeah, there you go, Jason. Floating plastic can keep it more upright. And he said, thank you, Fran. Tiago! Oh, Fran, I didn't know you were here, too. Uh, David, Sparky Head stands better and skips better. Sadly, no one makes them anymore. Mold's still available from Duet. Hmm, I'm going to have to look into that. Gordy, sorry, 516 sounds. Okay, not quite three eighths. Pew. Bam! There it is. That stands really well for a very light football jig, but it's got a broader size head than you would get from tungsten, which is very dense metal, right? So it's going to be a much, much smaller profile. So you can go something lighter like this that will still get that standing um, orientation out of it after it hits the bottom. Hi, Tiago. Couldn't make that any clearer. I hope not. So... Let's go back and recap one more time for anybody that's just jumping in here between all the four different head styles we covered. It is by no means covering everything because there's too many to cover, but we covered what covers the vast majority of primary head styles that you can run into out there. So we got your football jig. Eh, yeah, I'll leave that up. Which, again, bottom contact, open water for the most part, allows the bait to stand. Gives it that arms in the air like they just don't care presentation. Phenomenal for working around rocks. For the most part, unless you live in the granite state, we have very grabby granite all over the place here. Um, or Vermont, which has a lot of slate. That's even worse. But football head stands. All you got to know. Phenomenal bait. That's like what I cut my teeth on for learning how to fish jigs for a long time before I started getting everything else. Uh, and it makes for a bigger, bulkier, stand up right in front of your face presentation. Beyond that, grass jigs or swim jigs. Those are 100% intended, by my turn, interpretation, for vegetation. You want to be able to go through any and all vegetation, except for maybe like the thickest milfoil you can run into it. At, at a point, you're just not going to swim through that stuff. But all like your standard grass and lily pads and things like that. A swim jig will cut through vegetation due to its very minnow-like profile to the head, uh, or if it's more that bullet style. Either way, it's intended to cut through vegetation very, very nicely without getting hung up. On those, I do not touch the brush guard. I leave them as is. Because when you're swimming that, they truck it. Yeah, they're not going to miss it. They're literally no. just going to come up behind it or to the side of it and just <laughs> just engulf the thing. It's, there's no, yeah, there's no re reason to trim that down. I'm a little confused, but also milf? intrigued. Oh. oh, yes. Okay, yeah. I think it's MILF oil. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say MILF? Ah, whatever. Um, he said Raffle. 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 But is it a Raffle copter? <laughs> now we're going way back. <laughs> yes. Okay. There's your football. There's your grass. Covers very, very open water and the thickest vegetation you got. Or nearest thickest vegetation you got. Then there's your Archie head, which is a hybrid of the two, for lack of a better way to put it, where it does pretty damn good, but not great, but not terrible for both rocks and vegetation. You can do absolutely anything and everything with this, save fishing the thickest vegetation you can think of. So, Archie head, jack of all trades, you had to pick one jig to throw, you're kind of be hard pressed to beat that because it's just a phenomenal do all jig head. So there's that. And then last but not least, the little Magnum, which is a finesse flipping jig. The beauty. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what makes this jig unique and other jigs that are kind of like it, but there really aren't any other jigs like this. The weight is 100% in the head with two wire bait keepers behind it. So there's no weight wasted in the bait keeper um, aspect of the jig in that design. So when it falls, it is 100% head first and has all the weight dead centered onto the first point of entry for the bait. So it ends up slipping through cover, specifically thick vegetation, extremely well, similar to what you get out of a Texas rig. Or, uh, yeah, Texas rig from a bullet weight. Uh, and it works phenomenal. You can also swim it a little bit. It's got some versatility there. You can drag it. It's not going to stand up, but depending on how you're fishing it, I mean, there's there's a thousand ways you can fish pretty much any jig. Hell, you can swim a football jig for all I care, which we have done. And that's kind of the benefit of a football jig because you can still swim it, and it's still going to streamline, especially if you have a 
say, a swim bait on the back, like a 3.3 inch Kitek, but then the moment you kill it, it stands up. So, something to think about with football jigs. All right, we got three minutes before the raffle ends. So, if anybody has not gotten in on it and they want to, again, I'm going to give away like about 10, probably more jigs. Whoever wins, we'll talk after the fact. I will pick out weights, colors, styles, and then we've got a bunch of jig trailers. And then Beast Coast Fishing themselves are going to toss in. Let me get the specifics because I don't remember the exact specifics. Do, 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 do. What, what do you say? A few packs each of the Blade Runner trailers, which are his new jackhammer specific trailers, and they're freaking phenomenal. I have a ton of those. Uh, Flippin' Delights, which we are actually going to give away a few of ourselves from a few of these ourselves as well. And then for Jig specifically, he's going to throw in some little magnums and snipers. So, again, whoever wins, I'll work with you to understand what it is that you want. Then we'll, I will convey that to Beast Coast, and they're going to make that work as well. Um, you guys are going to make it. I know. Good. i got to get a rubber mat for the tank. It's 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 fine. fine. Overthinking. No, <laughs> but rubber floats. If they're going to do that, they're going to have to figure out a way to pin it down. Everything's fine. Everything's, Everything's fine. fine. All right. I think we're done with the tank for now. No, we'll, we'll bring the tank back when we talk about jig trailers. All right. You got two minutes on this raffle. Uh, let's go back to the chat. It's jig mating season, that tank. <laughs> How's it going, Danny? Now it is. <laughs> you just throw them all in there. I can't even see it. Oh, hang on. I had to stream. Oh, my God. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> <Coming> in hot. <laughs> right over your phone. Holy crap. You know how wet my phone's been. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, this is true. Rained on. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Guess what? You, you, holy shit. What happened? This is going to take a long time to get everybody entered into this for the giveaway. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, I, I, and Alec. I, ah, <laughs> there's too many people. And Alex. We got uh, one and, minute. And Michael and Mark and who else did I already say? Holy shit. Oh, God. Okay, well, I got to close this at 9. I got to, or else we're in trouble. <laughs> ah, there we go. Great question. Let's all right, throw that back. Remove you. What's going on, Gators Adventures? How you doing, friend? Uh, there you go. Question from Bob. Do you ever use rattles on your jigs? Once in a great while, yes. If it's a super tough bite, and they're just not biting anything, I will try the rattle jig, and if that is actually the key of what they want to eat, then yes, I will absolutely throw that for the rest of the day. Or I will find a trailer that has a rattle in it. <laughs> actually, that killed it one day. That rattling, uh, rattling jig. Where the hell were we? I don't remember. Um, is that the what yeah. No, that's the Dexty do. Uh, Jason, I had to remind myself what the Dexty do was. I do have them. It's kind. Of, it, I'm not even kidding. It's funny you bring this up because we've been killing it on the jigs lately, and I was going through everything I have, all my trailers, and I have like five bags of those, and I haven't thrown it yet. Oddly enough, I've thrown that on a drop shot, and I've gotten some attention, but like haven't really pulled up anything I've been looking for on that. Still catches fish. And I was looking at it, I was like, you know, that on a quarter ounce jig might actually look really cool. And oh, then yeah. I didn't throw it. I thought about it. I thought about it hard, but I didn't do it. I'm not sure why I didn't. Because I'm an idiot. That's how I do things. Uh, oh, I, but to Bob's question about rattles on the jig... Sometimes I used to throw a ton of jigs with rattles on it, but the problem is I haven't really found a good jig with rattles on that I like that doesn't become an absolute pain in the ass when it comes to getting my jig trailer on there. So for the most part, I stopped. Uh, I've tried those like you know rubber banded saddles that you can throw around the skirt as well. Yeah, they don't really last that long. That rubber that holds all those tends to break really easily. It gets dry rot really fast. I haven't looked at it in a few years though, so I don't know if they've got better ones out there, but. I, I try to avoid them myself. 
it's only on like really specific times that I will use them. But I mean, if they're starting to catch fish, I'm definitely gonna freaking keep throwing it. There's another stupid <laughs> people rattling it. Yeah. I know. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Raffle's closed. I can unpin this comment. You're done. Unpin. Because this is going to take me like 10 minutes to get everybody's names entered into here. Yeah, no joke. All right. Ask me questions. Can you see this chat over here? Yeah. Okay, bit. good. Because I got I to gotta take this. Sure can. Wheel of names. Go. Oh, God. This is going to take me a while. Delete. All right. Hit us up with more questions over the next, say, five minutes. And then we're going to get, we're going to do the raffle. And then we're going to go into jig trailers. Um, because I don't think I can do this and have you do trailers at the same time. No, I can't. But yes, questions. Hit us. Okay. Go. Do, do it. Do the questions now. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Oh, God, what I click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There is a lot going on here. Did you guys go over rods? No, not yet, Jason. We're going to do that last, yet. I think. Why did I answer that? Well, I'm supposed to be busy. I'm so sorry. I just like to hear my voice. You don't even hear your voice. Shh. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> uh, Swim baits wow. on footballs. Yes. <laughs> so it's funny. Well, you can elaborate on that. Because we were specifically only talking about skirted jigs if we included every single jig type out there tonight we'd be on here for three shit. or four hours we really would but yeah we could we could literally cover all the other non-skirted jigs in a, an entirely new episode next week like that's how much there is to talk about for these and how many different things we do but anyway go ahead yeah you can throw a swim bait little smaller swim baits or even bigger swim baits on uh on uh on jigs i was throwing a five-inch spark shad as a trailer on on a football head last year. And that actually worked out. I got like three and three-quarter or four-pound smallie on it, which was not expected. I would throw it cause, just because I wanted to see if something would bite it and something bit it. Do you prefer... Fishing your jigs on fluorocarbon leader or tied directly to braid. I, Brian, I like straight fluorocarbon. I jig rod, like if I'm just breaking off jigs left and right, I'm not going to want to have to retie a leader. That's just me. I, I can elaborate Call on that. Call it as well, but I, this. Jesus. There man. are some times where I do like having the braid to leader, but on jigs, for me, I just, I'm. No, not for me. He will. He will all if, the time. If I'm throwing a spinning rod, I will do it. That's the only way I'll throw it. And actually, it's funny because we were talking about this last week, two weeks ago. And I was, I need to realign my primary jig rod, my go-to, my baby. And I was thinking about that. I was like, you know what? I think I'm actually going to try going to braid on it. But the problem with braid that I have, I run my spool so loose so that I can get a 200 foot cast with a half ounce jig. He can verify for me on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that's like almost half backlashing on the way out too. Cause I, I mean, dude, I'm putting my body into my cast with a half ounce jig and heaving it because I have that leeway with Foro. Uh, you don't get that with Braden. You're going to have that shit dialed. Mm -hmm. And I like having that wide window of error that I can play within with straight floral. So there's that. Can you can you go up a little bit in my chat? All right, right there. Good. You guys have been killing on jigs local and in Vermont. What heads jigs did you use? Do did or do you did you use my god I can't talk. And what has been the most successful this summer? <laughs> uh open water sniper in half ounce. Oh, wait, hang on. That was... Who asked that? Uh, Jim B. Jim B. I want to pin that. Back it up. Bam. Okay. Go back to work. <laughs> For me, I mean, he's been switch. You don't really switch it up that much, differ too much from what I do. We kind of just kind of like figure out together what's working, and then we just kind of go from there. And Once in a while, we'll kind of switch it up to see if they're trying to bite something different, but... 
once we kind of figure out the winning combination, that's pretty much what we stick with for the day. Um, but pretty much all year fishing the deep grass, it's been open water sniper in half ounce with the colored dirt bag or was it um, the perch one? The uh, dirty perch? For the that. trailer color? No, no or the uh, Stealth Craw. Stealth Craw. Sorry. From Beast Coast. Beast Coast. The uh, open water sniper in Stealth Craw or Max Feel football, which is the Beast Coast football jig, also is in Stealth Craw. Yes. But they're open water snipers. I was using both. So oh, I was using like, open earlier water in the sniper. season for me, it was like for both of us, it was just the open water sniper. But then one of the things we're going to talk about too, and actually we'll do this next before we jump into trailers, kind of wrap up jigs, is we've been, one of the things I've been focusing on hard this year is modifying my jigs in some way, shape or form, just trying to really elaborate, uh, and just make gentle, subtle, minor, whatever you want to call it, tweaks to my presentation to provide better or different results. And it is absolutely working for us. Yeah. Like, big time like instead year. of keeping, like, instead of just cutting the trailer down by length, we cut it down and then skinny it up at the same time, depending on, the bite and everything. I mean, if they're a lot of the times when I'm fishing these jigs, I'll keep a full size trailer on. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep the full size trailer width on like on this open water sniper. Like this yeah, is exactly that. what I will throw. Either a flip and delight as a trailer, or the uh, Strike King Rage Craw. I like to throw for me. I like to throw some the trailer that's really big with a lot of action. So I go for like like flipping trailers, really, like the flip and delight or the Strike King Rage Bug or the Rage Craw, which has a lot of action in the tail. <laughs> Who the hell donated this from? Bush. Bush. <laughs> Who did this? What the fuck? Who are you? <laughs> I don't know. You lost me. I lost you. I lost you guys. I lost the question. <laughs> this is the trailer. This is pretty much the setup that I've been using. Keeping the full width without cutting down the sides of the trailer to skinny it up. I'll just keep that full width, but I'll take that whole top section pretty much off. So it's a short, fat presentation. So there's no way that they're going to miss it. They're not just going to come up and grab the claws. They'll come up and grab the entire thing because it's small, but it's still super bulky. You all right over there? Oh, my God. We misread it. It's not bush. It's brush. Oh, I saw, I saw bush. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> Sorry. I need this. Um... Uh, okay. I'm almost done, guys. Well, I'll have this done in, like, three minutes. Just don't click. Whatever you do. And dragging a paddle tail on a football is very effective or sweeping the rod on the bottom. Yes, sir. Do you, do you have a preferred jig trailer color combo oh, for this yeah. time of year? That's your sweet bippy we do. so many different <laughs> combos. But for right now, I just like to go natural. Sometimes in the summer... Uh, the crawfish do get like an orange tinge to them or just straight up orange on um, like the tips usually get start getting a little orange actually I think we have a trailer holy crap right here. this trailer we actually dyed the tips orange because we were pulling up smallmouth or largies I, don't, I think there were smallies that were spitting up crayfish claws that had just the tips orange sometimes the whole claw is orange. Sometimes the entire freaking thing is orange. That's why we have this. You got me wet. <laughs> Sorry. That's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but right, right now, um, like green pumpkin, something with a lot of very natural colors in that. I think I got. That's what I'm. That's what we've been throwing. Something with a lot of natural color. We're good. Okay, um, hold the questions. 
Oh, I forgot to unpin this one. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Brian. Thanks for joining. We're not supposed to talk about Stealth Crawl. Stealth Crawl is money for a number of reasons, and I will cover that shortly. All right, you guys ready for the giveaway? The raffle. Let us go ahead and share. And, of course, this is going to be a pain in my ass because just everything. Chrome tab. Eh. Stupid crap again. Episode 51, is it? What? No, it's 51 watching. Never mind. No, I got 51 notifications I have not paid attention to from oh. from the YouTubes. Okay, so that should be all you guys are seeing <laughs> now. Yeah, dude, it's... There was a lot of people interested tonight, <laughs> so thank you very much for everybody that did that. If you're getting any bigger, we're going to have to hire someone to make this wheel for us. I know. <laughs> all right, so... I'm going through. You can see the names. Go a little slower. I have not randomized them yet, but I can promise you, for whatever you guys paid for entries, you have that exact number in there. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle. Now it's random. And here we go. Can they see it? Yes. Double checking. There it is. And the plus side, too, after it picks a winner, it makes it really big. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. You. No, Tiago. Oh. <laughs> Congrats, buddy. Let's talk. Tomorrow, we'll get this all straightened out. Tiago Rib. Tiago Rib. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make sure. I, I three The first three letters of every, well, almost everybody's last names, just in case. I Well, for Tiago, I could probably just could put Tiago. How many Tiagos do we know in this world? T. I don't know any besides him. <laughs> I actually know another person named T. T. See, that wouldn't work. Anyway, congrats, Tiago. Let's uh, talk tomorrow, sir, when you have time. And we'll get you sorted out. I'm going to hook you up with a bunch of my stuff. And then we're going to have a nice little care package come from Beast Coast that we'll get sent to you as well. So congrats, friend. Go ahead and remove that. We're back to us. Huzzah. Let's go. <laughs> Forget the hashtag. <laughs> all right. Um, did we... All right. There was one thing I also wanted to talk about jigs. Did we talk about what we were doing to the skirts? Skirt. Not on the full skirted jig. Okay. Like the open water sniper has got a short little cute jig on cute trailer on it. Uh, skirt. Shorter skirt. Shorter skirt. Last thing on the jigs themselves. It's already 915. I'm trying to get this done as quick as I can. So if you look at the difference between, do you have just a regular football jig? There you go. I mean, and he cuts his, what I would consider pretty normal, pretty normal, maybe a smidge longer than standard, which is good. So get those as matched up as you can. Yeah, I'll go in front of yep. this camera. Oh, I got to turn it back on. One second. At the stream. There we go. 50-50. Ah, let me go this way. Okay. See the difference in the skirt length. One of the things that came up, um, I think it was one in the last jig episode we did, someone asked us, do you ever trim your skirts? And it's something that I've always had in the back of my head, but we've never actually done. Q three weeks ago, we were out fishing, and I do we were absolutely killing them on jigs. Uh, but we we're also losing a lot of jigs because we were in Vermont, and there's just slate everywhere up there. Plus zebra mussels. The zebra mussels are on the cover the rocks. They cover the grass. Like, which if you don't know what zebra mussels are, it's like throwing your jigs into a bucket of razor blades. Yeah, no joke. They're it's insane. You just pulling your line through the grass, you'll come back and you'll have like three feet of it chafed. Just from pulling through freaking zebra mussels, and it's they're nuts. this big, teeny tiny <laughs> little tiny. bastards. You'll you'll hook right through them. Yeah, you'll catch them all the time. <laughs> yep. So, open water sniper is killing it. We're getting really really low. Was it? I can't remember. One me. of the two of us. Was it you that said we should trim it? Yeah, I took the the strike king. The strike king uh, football heads. That's and I right. Was trimming it down while I was taking like an inch off off the skirt. I think that's what it was. So he started trimming his skirt and then, but I think you were fishing for like 10 minutes or something like that. It was for a little bit. Yeah, it was for like an hour. And, okay. And so, <laughs> like, the bite wasn't right. And I was like, well, hang on. We know the sniper's killing it. I still have an extra sniper. Give me your jig. I picked up my sniper. We put them up side by side. Give me the scissors. I took it and I cut the skirt for him and I matched it exactly identical length as a sniper. He started immediately hammering fish again. Mm-hmm. You would think something like that wouldn't matter. And I don't know if it's particularly this year or not, but clearly it mattered. I was, I mean, I was throwing a regular 
Maxfield football jig with a regular skirt, and I wasn't getting bit for shit. So the next thing I did was I cut the skirt down to match him as soon as he started cracking him. Because, again, we're running out of snipers. And then I realized I still wasn't getting quite like getting bit quite as often as him. So first thing we did for at least modifying our jigs was cutting the skirt down a little bit to be shorter. But he's still fishing me. And we're literally fishing the exact same thing. I mean, same rod, same reel, which those two don't really matter too much. Same exact weight, like line. Not line weight, not brand. Exact same line from the same spool. And we're fishing the exact same areas, and we are matching our cadence. I mean, just down to the very last final detail. He's still fishing me. So I'm like, let me see your jig. I look. He pulled the brush guard out. Okay. Grab the pliers. Popped it out. Second cast, I got bit. Okay. Third cast, I got bit. A couple of casts after that, I got bit. I'm like, son of a bitch. It's something that we're continually trying to learn more and more about for what we fish for jigs because we live and die by fishing a jig. We fish so many other things too. But we literally start and end the season with a jig in our hand. We start the, we start and end the day with a jig in our hand. <laughs> I was about to say, it, it's, it is the very first and very last thing of everything that we do. Begins and ends with the jig. What kind of jig it is, what we're doing with it, like all that just is what is where the variability comes in from. So That's funny because we were actually swimming football jigs last weekend. <laughs> ripping them back. Well, I mean like 8.3 to 1 and ripping them back. Yeah. <laughs> And it happened by accident because I got bit. I was burning my jig back for another cast. All of a sudden, dunk. I'm like, huh? I set the hook. I'm like, oh, jeez, I had a fish. But it was like a lazy hook set because I didn't really think it was a fish the way he ate it. Uh, And then it happened again, I think, two casts after that. And then I picked up. I tried the same thing. I I literally cast it out, let it sink for about three seconds, and just start burning it back. And dunk. I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) That was a smallie. (laughs) I did it right after him. And it was like maybe three casts after. I did the same thing. I'm like, well, fuck that. I won't try. Bomb it out. I let mine hit the bottom. Let it sit for a second, one drag, and then it like kind of slowly got it up and then just kind of got into a steady cadence and then dunk, and it worked great. But anyway, going back to at least modifying jigs, that's one of the things we're working a lot on this year. Uh, but it really, it's been about the trailers themselves and the colors. And only recently did we start playing around with skirt length and with or without brush guard, even though we're fishing in areas where you really, really, really do want a brush guard. And it absolutely makes a difference, or I should say made a difference. Jury's still out on whether or not that's a consistent thing or if that's just something we happen to stumble upon recently. But it does change the profile. Like if you look at a regular half ounce football jig, say from Striking or Beast Coast, from Beast Coast would be their max feel, Striking would be their tour grade, uh, and then with the brush guard, like it's just, it's bulky, right? That's kind of the whole purpose of a skirted jig. It's to provide a bulky profile. Then you trim a half inch off that skirt and you remove the brush guard. It's still kind of bulky, but not like crazy bulky. And then you streamline the whole thing by not having this random brush guard now sticking out of the profile. Fat, like that. It's exactly what a, stri- what a sniper is. And that has been killing it. The easiest and m- most accurate way, if you've never trimmed your skirts before, pull it upside down and get it around the brush guard. Just get it all down oh, nice man. and even. Just grab it. And then there you go. Snip. Then they all come off at once. Comes off. Perfect. You don't have to go and try and be like. Yeah, like a barber. <laughs> oh, what about that Asian barber that's got the butcher knife? Where he's like. Yeah. I'd be like. Shut. <laughs> <laughs> Help. <laughs> Dad. It's gone. Right. <laughs> You're stuck in a rock again. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll get stuck in something else. <laughs> You've lost your arm. <laughs> Tis but a scratch. <laughs> Just a flesh wound. <laughs> You've got no legs. <laughs> what are you going to do? Bleed on me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bite your ankles. <laughs> you going to stop doing that. <laughs> I love that movie. It's so good. <laughs> oh. But your bloody legs. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. See, oh, oh, okay, yeah. T- I'll go get it in a minute. All right, so what? I, th- that's the last thing I wanted to touch upon. Jigs. It's nine twenty. We need to get going. Um, oh, 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 as yeah. far as what you're doing with it, just because it comes out of the box looking a certain way, if you are absolutely killing them on it, 
one day and the next day you go out and it's the exact same damn conditions and you're not getting bit, rethink ever so slightly what it is that you have in your hand that you want to present it. Something as simple as even trimming a half an inch off of the skirt length or taking a three and a half inch either flip and delight or striking rage crawl and trimming a quarter inch off that or three quarters of an inch off it just to change the overall profile of it a little bit can make all the difference in the world. So I hope that gives you a little bit more insight onto all the different head styles and Oh God, it's just everything else. All right, I'm gonna keep repeating myself. Nah, no, remove that, remove that. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, so let's quickly talk about jig trailers because we could go on and on about this and I don't want to because it was primarily about the jigs. Jig trailers, Jesus Christ, that could be its own friggin' episode yeah, again. it really could. If This is bullshit. I don't know why we keep saying that. Literally any topic you and I could think of for fishing could be its own episode. I know, it could. So it's kind of a dumb moot point at this jig point. Jig trailers? <laughs> I can I can if, summarize this in two but but you first. If they want something super active, go with something. Go with like striking rage claw. Striking rage claw. Do I, Those uh, things just brrr, did you bring all that the bag? way down. Um, yeah. Wait, we already have one on a jig on the floor. Tanks coming back. This one's our. This one's died. We died this one, but. Okay, you talk. I'm playing. Strike King Rage Craw. I don't know if I'll be able to get. I got it. No, you talk. I play. Okay. Oh, we go on the rope. Oh, do we? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. Go ahead. So these things have, they're kind of like, they're super flimsy arms, and they have. I don't, I don't even know how to explain. It. It's like a, it just catches the water and it throws those legs like crazy. Yeah, see, like that, like crazy. On the fall, the fish will just come up and absolutely inhale those things. Just if they're that's if they're looking for something that has a lot of action. Well, a little less action. If they're looking for a little less action, throw something that doesn't have those like scoops on the on the claws or as big of scoops on the claws. You can kind of work your way from a super super active trailer to something that's a lot more not active <laughs> if you understand that this is the flipping delight oh, it, it still has good action but it's not as freaking crazy wibbly arm whatever the inflatable man arms wacky wave inflatable arm man yeah that, wacky wave inflatable arm man yeah that one <laughs> wacky wave inflatable, inflatable arm man and and even Less than that, if you're looking for almost zero action. No, 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 that's not true. Not where you're coming. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Say the, well, you want to put it up to the camera and show it how it has the. Yeah, I'll show that. Whatever, I don't even know what, what do you call those? Protruding Ribs. appendages. Ribs. Appendages. Ribs. Ribs. Ribbed for the bass's pleasure. Yes. Put it in your mouth, bass. <laughs> so that thing, it literally has, it's just like a solid chunk of plastic with claws. There's no, it is craw profile. Yes. And look at that claw sticking up. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, there's no action to it whatsoever besides it sticking its arm up. So on the fall with those craw trailers, what are those craw trailers? Those are the, so got, the Yamamoto baby craw. Fat baby, fat baby craw. Fat baby craw. Almost zero action on the fall. Hold it there for a second. It should focus on it. It did with the other one. Give it another second. Maybe not. <laughs> Turn it sideways a little, maybe. Yeah. That has enough surface area where it catches water and it makes that thing flail like crazy. That's the striking rage crawl. And this is 
the Beast Coast flipping the light. You can still see it has that little rib on the end of it. Still catches water, just a little more subtle than the, than the Rage Craw. God, I love that trailer. And those things stink. And then, and then the where'd it go? Give me oh god, um, give me a twin tail grub. We're talking about things that uh, just give me a brushy. Give me another bag. I had a bag. Uh, I don't see a bag as many. Oh wait, right here. So on the on the act, topic of really active or action packed trailers. Oh no, no, no! I'm telling you. You tell them. <laughs> oh, no. What is that? Twin tail grub. Oh, uh, all right. And this is a twin tail grub. So this is just a skirted jig with with a tin, twin tail grub with the top ripped off of it. I can't well, even hold this a, thing. It's so greasy. Jesus. It's a hula grub, but I cut the hula. Part. Right. A hula grub with no hula. It's just a grub. Look at it's dancing. <laughs> but that on just like a straight up unskirted regular naked football jig. Can't really tell with the skirt on there, but that thing has some crazy action on the fall. And they're not super fat and like they don't take up a lot of space, I guess, so it would it would just fall a lot faster than like a flipping trailer, like a big fat flipping trailer. So that thing, those things falling down, they'll just <laughs> gone. Downside to this is look at look at the legs do. They pen just when it's sitting there. Yeah, they don't really have much action on the bottom sitting there. They don't stand. Unless there's this current. Back in. Right. Unless there's current. If there's current, these legs will move on the bottom. If you're just sitting in like a little kettle pond somewhere and there's not much current going by, these legs on the bottom will not really move at all. And they don't really stand up like they're supposed to they just curl right back in how they were designed to figure eight got some musky in my tank <laughs> ow <laughs> <laughs> no it's gross water <laughs> all right it's like so he can river water so to recap <laughs> There's a whole host of jig trailers that you can do. If you want to break down the most simplistic terms, think time of the year and how aggressive the fish are. Match your jig to that bite. Uh, sorry, jig trailer to that bite. Like that is the most simplistic view I can give you on that. Middle of the summer, Rage King, uh, Rage Craw is king. One of the best baits that I've ever thrown in the middle of the summer. It's big, it's got a ton of action, and it mostly still stands straight up. So if you're fishing on like a football jig and it falls back down, those appendages still mostly want to stand up so it's easier for them to find. That's where I actually like the flip and dive a little bit better. As you saw, not quite as violent as a Rage Craw, but pretty damn close. I mean, it's a fatter bait, so it's gonna slow down the jig on the fall a little bit. And it still has a little more of a subtle kick to it. Yep. But it's just a completely different action. And the legs still stand straight. So what I really like about that, especially with that being floating plastic, it tends, I feel like that does a better job than the striking Rage Craw. So Flip and Delight does a better job than the Rage Craw in making it stand up. Mm -hmm. But even though those appendages have a ton of swimming and kicking action to them during the fall, they stand up straighter. So they provide, they even though they're the same length, they actually, in my opinion, produce a taller, longer profile. Well, I guess it depends on what Strike King Rage Cry you get because they make them in different lengths. So there's that. Um, now, on the flip side, if you're going into much, much colder water, you want something more like what we're talking about here with the Yamamoto <clears throat> Fat Daddy Craw, where it's just straight up profile, but there is no action to that when it falls. Uh, it doesn't have to be an actual like picture perfect crawl. It could be something like a Zoom Super Chunk. You know, it, it's just two big flat appendages. They do pretty much nothing on the fall, but they stand straight up. And those tend to have, well, I guess it depends on what brand you're throwing. Like um, the Max Scent, they make a, the hell am I thinking of? Not Chigger Craw. Actually, they make Chigger Craw. Berkeley Chigger Craw is another great, like, cold water jig trailer because it has very, very little action on the fall. They make a Max Scent version of that as well. So you can get even, like, 
well, the max scent aspect of it with that dead action, which tends to help when you're just letting a bait sit there and soak and present itself in profile just by sitting dead still. That's where the beauty of something like that with no profile of their appendages comes into play and is more beneficial to you than say something really loud like a rage craw or the beast goes flipping to light but doesn't quite stand up as much and just like stand there and say, somebody come eat me. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's where that came from. <laughs> jig trailers. In a nutshell, that's all you gotta know. I mean, just find a jig trailer and do you can literally play with it in your kitchen sink. Just plug the kitchen sink, fill it to the brim, stick a trailer on a jig, or just like pull it around by hand and just see what the appendages do. But if it's got any sort of a rib on it, there's going to be some kicking slash swimming action to it. If they are dead flat. More often than not, they're not going to have any action to them when they're on the fall. They're just going to stand straight out and hang out and be like, hey, look at me. Come eat me. Um, Still got to figure out what the fish want to bite that day, though. Yes. All right. We've talked jigs. We've talked trailers. I want to talk about the most important thing before it gets too late while we still have a good audience here. Cadence. After everything else we're talking about, this is by far the most important thing. So for those of you that were here to hopefully learn something, that don't have a high degree of confidence in what you're doing with jigs, this is by far the most important aspect of fishing a jig. Really, any bait out there, period. Cadence is king. What is our general rule of thumb? And you continue to hammer that point home into my head to me when we were fishing Slow. jigs. <laughs> Slow as she goes. Slow the hell down. We've said it a number of times. Go as slow as you think you can possibly manage and then go half as slow from there. There is some times where it, speeding up helps. Like the other day, we were literally swimming the bit jigs back and they were, the fish were biting it. 90% of the time, 90, I'd say 95% of the time, I'm working jig. When I'm working a jig, I, f I am mentally thinking of what the jig is doing down there what rock it's going over. I'm going to just move it up and over a rock. Is, I mean, if you're trying to imitate a crayfish or a baitfish, or a baitfish, I mean, we'll, we'll just zoom right off. And <laughs> zoom, so, zoom. So crayfish. But if you're looking, thinking of a crayfish on the bottom, that thing is just kind of working its way around, not really doing much, not just like taking off until, unless something's coming up after it. But... These things are just kind of hanging on the bottom, working around, working up over rocks, going under, under rocks, working around. The slower you, the, for me, the slower it's the better. Because I, I know that I've worked that line that I'm working. I will, I will fish a line for, geez, I don't know. We'll park the boat and fish it for hours. Literally just hitting every inch, every cast, just working it as much as possible that whole entire area if the if we're catching fish on that one spot you bet your ass we're going to spot lock and we're going to fish it for pretty much until those they stop biting and we work every inch of it as slow and methodically and just work every inch of your cast yep i will elaborate on that a little bit in that i try to match andrew's cadence like to a T because he's just got it down much better than I do and has the patience and is extremely methodical. And what that has ended up doing, why I want to match that, the number of big fish he's caught over me, like five plus pounders and bigger, is a lot more. Like it's significantly more than I have caught. And the vast majority of those have been working a jig stupidly slow. At like all times of the year. Stupid slow. It, sometimes it's kind of annoying because I just want to fish it faster, but I don't. It, it's it's hard <laughs> some days where, like, you just don't want to do it. But then, like, you end up catching, like, five. I mean, they don't even have to be big fish, but you catch, like, just five really healthy fighting fish in, like, 20 minutes to half an hour. Fishing that stupidly slow, and all of a sudden, it, it like it's like, okay, yeah, no, I can do this. And then you stick, like, a five or a six. Because you let a jig soak for 20 seconds in the middle of July. And you're like, okay, yeah, no, I can I can get behind this. <laughs> and it, 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 it's added perspective. And it, it really hammers that point home 
by getting that reward. Again, it doesn't always have to be a big fish. Sometimes it's just a different class of fish, even in that same size, but the different class of fish in the fight that they give. Um, I don't know what it is, but you know, those fish that tend to bite <clears throat> when you're fishing a lot slower, they don't quite have that sprint that a lot of those other fish do where it's like that first 10 seconds is absolute mayhem. And then they just kind of like, nah, okay, I'm coming in. It's more like they bite it and they don't even know that they're hooked they're just... and they're like, yeah, they just shrug Let's their go. shoulders and they just put their head down and go. You bet. <laughs> That's why I use the fastest ratio and then. Heavy rod and a heavy rod. <laughs> Get them to the boat. Heavy line, nothing less than fifteen pound for ninety nine percent of the time that we yeah, fish for jigs. Nine, yeah, I'd say fifteen pound. Fifteen pound is my is our. I would say our go to. Yeah. Well, we can we can elaborate on that more. Um, here's the thing, though. Sometimes they don't always want something really slow. And it's just like anything else, right? I mean, you talk about jerk baits and people talk about cadence all day long and for good reason. Like when it comes to jerk baits, that's cadence. about one of the most important things you can talk yeah. about is cadence. That's what jerk bait fishing is, is cadence. <laughs> Jigs have a very wide range of what the cadence can be that will work. And in the summer, it is at its absolute widest. And it, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Because in one spot, you can go from essentially just like ripping a jig like we were talking about the other day. And even in the... It, it literally happened in the same body of water in the same day where you go to two different spots and they could only be a hundred to 200 feet apart. So you could be just fishing two different schools of fish. And in one school you have to crawl it like it's the middle of winter. You're moving it like maybe a, a foot about this pace. You're just like, yeah. okay, just, just stay there for about 20 seconds. I'll come back to you. Let me know how you're doing. How you doing? You go yeah, all right, one second, one second. How you doing? <laughs> and you come back and it's just painfully slow, but you start catching fish like every couple of casts doing that. I don't think it's painful though, that's the thing. I like it. I know I, I really don't think it's painful at all, but I know we I are understand. very much the exception. <laughs> yeah. I can understand for some people that are used to fishing only fast and can't let can't let a jig sit for more than three or four seconds. Right. Um but then they could be on the polar opposite thing. Like we literally had that where we were doing that kind of insanely slow fishing in one spot and then 200 feet off in the other direction. We were burning it back. We both have 8.3 to one ratio reels. That's a very, very fast retrieve reel. And we're like, like that, that's a very, very fast retrieve. That's like four feet a second. And, and <laughs> on a very high speed reel. And all of a sudden, thunk, and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, you set the hook. And we did that over and over and over again. And then we go to the next spot. And they don't even want anything like that. And then I end up kind of like one of the other things that works really well this time of the year is stroking a jig. And you literally like, I will grab the butt end of my rod. So I have split grip. So I'll grab real butt end. And like, I'm trying to snap my jig six, eight feet off the bottom in one shot. And that reactionary, just like the whole oh, shit. Like it looks like a crayfish just fucking off. Or yeah. like a bait fish taking off or or it's reenacting the fall again. Yep. And you, it yeah. It just fires them up. Like they just they know that it's the same profile and color and in the area of things they like to eat and all of a sudden they see something really close by that goes rocketing away and then slows right back down and it's just pure reaction and they'll go right for it. So summertime is kind of weird in that you can fish any one end of those extremes. Honestly, right now you really can't go wrong with like a 3 to 5 second pause at max. You can like kind of drag it like kind of like that. Like that's a yeah. good like one to two foot swing and at a pretty fast pace. At that point, it's almost going to kind of like hop off the bottom. You're not going to drag it if you're moving that fast unless you're fishing like a one ounce jig. And you get a secondary action from the jig. Once you get it off the bottom, you got the tails moving again. Exactly. Legs moving again. <clears throat> yep. Uh, and then you can also kind of like this. So you're just kind of bouncing the line, but with slight tension and it's kind of making the jig go. It's kind of like hopping along the bottom is what I'm trying to make it do. And I've seen that, you know, like I'll pitch it 30 feet away from me in the shallows and I'll just do, 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 kind of bounce the rod tip only a couple of inches by the time you're up there uh, on semi slack line. It's just kind of making it shimmy along the bottom. That can be really good too. And you can just shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Wait two seconds and repeat. You could do that all the way back to the boat. Uh -huh. That's like slow fishing, but also fast fishing. 
Jim B says he's been talking a lot about going slow, 10 second pauses. This is a great how question. Do you, how do you do that with no spot lock and some wind? I keep moving and can't slow down for 10 second stops. I don't have spot lock on my boat. I don't even have drafts on my boat. <laughs> I have been out in my boat in 20 plus mile an hour winds on a small pond, and I have my trolling motor on three or four just constantly, and I'm getting my boat to sit where I want it to sit manually, and I'm still fishing the same way and still catching fish. Yep. Um, you just got to put a little more extra work into your foot. <laughs> that's, it, that's it. And if, you, if your boat starts taking away, pop your bail open, let some line out, and then and wait five, six seconds, click it, click it shut, reel in your slack. If there's nothing there, pop, 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 let it sit. Do the same thing, let some line out. Yep. If your boat's freaking all over the place, it's the easiest way to keep it. Yep. Keep it where you want it. That's when, and that that's another reason why I like to have my rod spooled the way it is. Although, if you're fishing with no spot lock and you're dealing with wind, it sucks. You've got the wind <laughs> to your benefit, though, so you can turn. And I mean, if you're throwing a half ounce football jig, especially like on the like the right setup, and we're gonna get to that next because we're running out of time here. I'm trying to keep this less than two hours. You can huck that spinning rod, casting rod doesn't matter. With the wind, half ounce football jig. You can get that well over 150 feet out away from you with a really, really good cast. And unless the wind is absolutely ripping, you can throw that way out in front of you. You'd be down in 15, 20 feet pretty damn fast. And you can work it back towards yourself, even though the wind is taking you towards it. And you've got a good amount of time. You just kind of have to like slowly reel up the slack a little bit just in case you get bit during that pause. If you get too much slack, you're never going to know. You're going to just try to constantly reel up slacks. So you try to catch into that fish. So there's that. Um, Expanding upon that, like, I mean, that that's summer in a nutshell. Mix it up. More often than not, you can fish fast with a jig right now. You can swim it. You can slow, You can fast drag it. You can, you know, yo-yo it, stroke it, whatever you want to call it. Um, honestly, like, three to five seconds is kind of the max. This has been a really kind of a strange year. Like, most of what we're doing is outliers. But the plus side is a lot of these outliers play to our strengths. So we've been able to make those adjustments very easily and comfortably with especially slowing way down. You don't normally need to do that. You should be able to fish a lot faster. So take all that with a grain of salt. As we start getting colder, just slow down your paws a little bit more and more. And that was the other thing I wanted to get to is JP's <laughs> thing. So last point on this, and then I want to touch upon gear and they're going to wrap this up. The longest we've gone. The longest <laughs> I've gone without, I mean, just straight up not moving my jig maybe 30 seconds i've i've tried for longer but i haven't gotten bit yet um now other baits yeah, i've i've literally <laughs> last year i had to go back and watch the footage and and time it out 93 seconds with a Demiki rig just sitting there like arm locked it felt like it was like my arm was going to seize because i could see this fish on my graph coming up and back down and back up <laughs> He did it six times before he bit, and it was like real, just painfully slow. Here he comes. A couple more inches. Come on. And then Dunk. the lines would blend. And I'd be like, it's going to happen now, any second. And then the line separates. And back down he goes two more feet. <laughs> it's like, you son of a bitch, where are you going? <laughs> oh, just kidding. Come back. <laughs> 93 seconds with a Demiki just sitting there. Don't move a muscle. <laughs> I think the long longest I've gone without moving a jig was two minutes. And I would believe it. Now, we are talking end of the year in 50 feet of water, 38 degrees surface water temp. Like, literally the end, end, end of the year. The next weekend, we couldn't go back because the whole lake froze over end of the year. <laughs> uh, but, it, dude, it's like that's just winter fishing for you. Sometimes you get to fish stupid slow. More often than not, you have to. Um, but, I mean, you, you now you're talking like super, like, Cast hardly out, anybody fishes when we do. Bombing as far as you can. Let it sink to the bottom. Eat a sandwich. Start a podcast. I mean, like, not listen to one, but, like, actually physically start setting up a podcast on the boat because you have that much time. Yeah, when run over and soak. Okay. They're not even just... Okay. Move it an inch or two. Dude, when you're fishing Wait. that late in the year, you li we literally should bring an egg timer. Like, we should both just, like, and then put the rods down and... 60 seconds later, ding! Ooh, we can check a rod. <laughs> <laughs> ding! Done! <laughs> I got her! <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to bring one next time. Should be great. <laughs> okay, so, um, oh, Finley. All right, let me answer some questions, and we'll lightly touch upon rods and gear and stuff. But uh, one other thing, very last thing I want to ask you guys, start thinking about it, and we're going to cover it. Uh, I want to hear suggestions for you for future episodes for the show. The next one I think we're going to do is electronics with Bass Fishing Electronics. Um, if not the next one, sometime very soon. We already talked. He wants to come back on. We just need to schedule the day. Uh, but I want to hear other ideas. Finley, what should I do when I'm fishing and my spool line comes off and it's not going... On? Elaborate, please. Um, Spider jig setup. Crap, we didn't really talk about that because it's technically not in the realm of skirted jigs, which is what we really wanted to cover tonight. But... Literally just a spider jig. For those that don't know what that is, it is a uh, twin-tailed hula grub. I pretty much, I mean, I, I get them from a bunch of different companies. Crazy Hickbait has them now, and they're phenomenal. Um, Yamamoto makes them, Chompers. Like, those are the only three that I fish. I think I've tried others in the past, but those are the only three that I own now. Those are, they're good. I mean, the hula part of it is essentially its own skirt. And literally everything we talked about already, yeah, that. It applies to a spider jig. It falls in the same realm. It does the same thing. It's kind of a finesse presentation versus like an open water sniper is kind of like a spider jig on steroids. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's that. Um, uh, Finley, if you're still here, elaborate. All right, so let's talk about gear setup, and this can be really quick. Um, I've talked a lot more than you, so let my, you start. My go-to, if I'm going out and I'm like, say I break a rod and I need to go to the store right now and get a new rod, for jig fishing and we run to Bass Pro or we run to Joe's or we run anywhere or Ben's Tackle Shack or Ben's Tackle Shack. That's where I'm going first. We, uh, Got you, I will go with like a seven, three to seven, four medium, heavy, uh, fast. That's pretty much my go-to or if I'm going, I know I'm going to a place where there's going to be a lot of heavy cover or there's, Donkeys. Known giants <laughs> in this place. I will go with the seven three seven four heavy, fast. That's or even heavy extra fast, depending on what they have there and if I like it. <laughs> I concur. I literally don't need to add anything to that because I literally fish the same exact things when it comes to jig rods. Cool. Seven three medium heavy fast. Like Sorry, seven longer. two medium heavy fast is my current go to. I have one coming from John at Wigan Custom Rods. It's going to be a 7.3 Heavy Fast on what is almost essentially the same blank as my 7.2 Medium Heavy, but inch longer, slightly stiffer backbone. I like the 7.3, 7.4s. If I could, I would like a 7.5, which would be sick. That would probably, well, I'm curious to see what the new Lewis rods are going to be. I know. If they have a 7.5 like Heavy Fast, Done. That's my new Jerry Grub. Shit, I'll go with it for a 7.6 <laughs> if they have it. Either Ooh. one. Dude, 7. To seven six, medium heavy fast to heavy fast. Mm -hmm. Like anything in that realm for lengths and action and power. That's it. That's all you need. Um, you can go the other way. Like if you're gonna go with a spinning rod, you could. Well, it entirely depends. Like I have another rod from Wicked Custom Rods. It's a six nine medium heavy fast, but it was specifically intended for cracking half ounce and three quarter ounce tubes. It is a stout rod, despite the fact that it's pretty short. Just um, yep. Yeah, that thing's sweet. <laughs> Dude, if you try and throw a 3 8 on it, it sucks. It's too light. It hates it. You throw a half ounce on it, it's like, it's pretty good. Like, you can bomb it, and they, it just feels good. It loads up proper, like the whole nine yards. You throw a three quarter ounce on it, and that thing sings every time. And I don't mean to like really over elaborate, but I, I'm telling you, that rod was really meant to throw three quarter ounce heads because it just loads up absolutely perfect. I can bomb a three quarter ounce jig on that 6'9 rod, 200 feet, because that is literally what I use in the winter. I'll spool up, I don't know, 300 feet roughly of just straight 12 pound fluorocarbon on that. Like when it gets really cold, we're dealing with ice. But otherwise, it's 15-pound braid to a 12-pound liter of fluorocarbon. And just... <laughs> and I, I sit there, and I'm just, like, watching it go. Eyes ah, just like... Oh. And he just looks over, and he's like, What the crap? <laughs> <laughs> is that a tube? What is that thing? <laughs> it's one of them goddamn UFOs. <laughs> 
But anyway, dude, seven foot to seven six, medium heavy, fast, heavy fast. Any of those rods will do great. Reels, go. Reels. The faster ratio you can get, the be- the better. In my opinion. Um, like he said earlier, we both use a, an eight point three to one. Um, lose whatever the hell the name. What the hell is that thing? Which one? The newest one? Yeah, the custom. Light. Custom light. That's that dark gray one. Yeah, with the carbon with the carbon fiber and the gold. What is that one? That's the one I even I've been using. SLP or SCLP, whatever. I don't remember that. It's gonna bother me. Because you're right, it's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember it. It's, I think it's the SLP Light Pro or something like that. Reels. Uno momento, por favor. Wait, right there. Right there. Discontinued. No, not that one. Tournament. No, this custom one. custom Pro, Pro big cast real second gen. Wait, second gen. Yep. Second gen. Yeah. That's an eight point three to one, and it, they're just the faster the ratio, the better. I'm hoping that Just the new one, if wait. I'm hoping the next couple of years, they have like a 10. 9.3 to one is good enough for me. I mean, I want the 10. I mean, now you're splitting hairs from 9.3 to 10. Come on. Yeah. 0.7. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm curious though. What point is it like too much speed, That's not enough torque? More than a half inch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you put it in that perspective, yeah, it's, it's pretty big deal <laughs> torque. the torque you want the torque for jigs you want to get them up out of the cover they're in as fast as possible because it's just that's just what you want to do yep just pulling up slack There's too many factors going on at once that you want that speed and you want the heavy rod to get that thing off the bottom or out of the cover and onto the boat as fast as possible before it decides it doesn't want it in its mouth anymore yep and honestly, that's the, the best benefit I can speak to about going with braid to a fluorocarbon leader if you're comfor- comfortable and confident in doing that. I, I don't know. I'm just, again, I, I like having that wide window of margin of error in my cast for when I absolutely bomb it with fluorocarbon that, like, it's not the end of the world if I backlash. Like, I can just easily pull that out. Sometimes I got to use a pick, but whatever. It's fine. Um, with braid, I, I'm kind of nervous about that. But... With braid, you have zero stretch or near zero stretch. So even if it bites it and it's coming at you, you don't have to pick up every single last inch of slack line on a 150 to 200 foot cast to set it home. But having a high speed ratio reel does that for you. That's why all my jig rods are 8.2 or higher. I have two hyper mags, which I think are 8.2 to one. 7.3 Seven? really is fine. I mean, my Corrado's is 7.5. That was my jig rod before I picked up. I got picked up by Luz. Yeah, and I had multiple 7.3s, 7.5s. 7.2s is the lowest I would go. When you get into jig fishing and you're, like, really passionate about it and you really want, like, the perfect setup and how exactly how you want it and you've been doing it long enough where you can tell the difference, the faster the ratio, the better. Yeah. You don't want anything less than 6. I wouldn't even go anything less than 7. Seven seven, seven point, point two is seven point two is probably the lowest I would go. Yeah, and I think that's the most common real ratio you can find. And there they'll be all over the place in the sevens, but seven point two to one and higher, like he just said, that's what I'd recommend for a jig rod. Because again, like it's most of the time you're not swimming it. Like if you're swimming it, swimming it, and you want like a swim jig, then that I'm throwing on a six point three to one setup, and I have other stuff for that. But if you're talking about pure bottom contact, where the only action you're imparting on your jig is through the rod, through actually physically moving it, not reeling it. You want a high speed reel because you're just trying to catch up on slack. You're trying to pick up slack. You're trying to catch up to the fish. More often than not, they're going to bite it and run right at you. If you think you felt the bite and you go to lift up and it's dead slack and after a couple of cranks, it's still slack, you have a fish. Reel like your life depends on it until you feel tension and set the hook like your life depends on it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you'll catch way more fish doing that than otherwise um line i'll go first this time i just kind of talked about a little bit there's like really no right or wrong answer other than 12 pound straight floor carbon is the absolute lowest i would go i have done it i'm not a huge fan of it unless i'm trying to fish ever again i i only do it if i'm fishing like quarter ounce or three eighths ounce jigs deep water otherwise i go 15 or higher i've 
another rod that I've done straight 20 pound on. I actually have a couple rods I've done that with, and that's great too. Anything over 20, I feel like it's overkill. Yeah. Like 15, well, actually even 14 pound. I've used that and that worked really well. 14 to 20 pound, straight fluoro, or go braid to a fluorocarbon leader. You can do like 20 pound braid to 20 pound leader or 30 pound braid to 20 pound leader. Like you can't go about any of that stuff. Uh, yes, Bob, drop shotting, absolutely. What, we covered rod, reel, line. That's it. Attitude. Attitude. Positivity. Perspective. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we go, first and foremost, thank you all for dealing with us. This ended up being two hours. I tried my best. We couldn't. We live and die by the jig. I, I, I really thought we could keep this to maybe an hour and a half. If it wasn't for the giveaway, it would have been a lot closer, but I'm glad we did that. Thank you, everybody that partook in that. Um, ooh, while you're reading this off, Tiago, if you're still here, or if anybody else is curious, I'll go get my pats. It's in my truck. It's uh, things pretty sexy. I, well, oh, I thought, I thought I you were, like, leaning thing? in to talk to me. No, not yet. Oh. Um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys want to see? Bob, I'll put it up on the... Bob. What about Bob? Hey, Bob. Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> what about drop shot on your future show? Hell yeah. Oh, it's kind of funny. We have done terrible this year with the drop shot when like every I other year we've done phenomenal. I don't think I've thrown it in the last two years. South Jersey won it two weeks ago. Drop shotting. Okay, Bob, Brian. I agree with Bob. Drop shotting is one of my weakest areas. The only problem with drop shotting is a lot of what I do with that mostly depends on electronics. Because I need to know that there's bait in the area for me to have that degree of confidence in drop shot. So, that is the only caveat. Okay, take over. I'm going to hide this. Let me go get my bait. All right, he's going to go get his bait. and I'm just going to hang out here with you guys. Hey, thanks, Jim. I need monster. What do we got for next week? Did he say what we're doing next week? I wasn't listening. I can't find it. That's still a schedule. It's going to be pretty sweet. Sweet couple months. <laughs> you drop shot like a fish. Yeah, well, Jason, you got unlimited drop shot baits. You just make them all day long. <laughs> I Yeah, I haven't drop shotted, and I don't think I've even... I don't even think I've thrown it this year once. I don't even know if I threw it last year once. He didn't say next week. All right, well, it'll be a surprise then. It's a surprise for me, too. <laughs> He's getting the bait. I can hear him coming. Maybe not. Dad, hurry up. You finish and how many ones do I have to do? Gotta make more. Gordy bought a bunch. Yeah, by the way, Jason, I wanna I have an idea about a bait. If you're willing to work with me. Dude, that's all I can smell is those baits. <laughs> what the, the uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh Tiago's still here, okay. I, that, 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 that. I even got the holder yet. I almost stepped on a rabbit when I went outside. <laughs> Did you see that video? No. Look at my phone. What video? I'll even show you guys. I'll show you a picture. Wait, just right now? No, 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 no. It was I posted it the other day. Just put it. Um, okay, yeah, that's okay. gentle. <laughs> Library. Oh, for frick's sakes. It's just easier if I go this way. Back, 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 back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You saw the little bunny? Yeah, you sent me the video of the little hand. <laughs> Dude, I was so happy. <laughs> uh, it, it, come on. Zoom. Zoom! Where what was it? Huh? It was right in my driveway. A little teeny tiny bunny rabbit. Little oh, baby oh, bunny rabbit. I just almost stepped on one running outside of my truck. They're, they're nested, like, right beside my truck. Mash, Ow! Mash him, bash him, put him in a stew. Stab my muffin top with my bait. Mash that thing? Mash it? Bash it and put it in a stew? I would. Like Smeagol, eat it raw. Okay. Um. 
Dan's good. Thank you, Dan. All right, sorry, going backwards. Dan, thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, it didn't say next week. This is true. I will get to the drop shot topic. Well, it could be next week. It depends. I want to work around Steve at Bastards and Electronics um, schedule to see what we can do because I really want to do another electronics episode. Oh, you already saw it. All right. Yeah. I want me a Pats. He got his Pats that he's been trying to get for years. Snack gill. Wait, is that the snack or the mini gill? I thought that was the mini gill. No, that's a snack. I bounced it off a rock the other day, too. Look at that. Yeah. I cried a little when I hit it. Anyway. Like, don't be broken. Don't be broken. <laughs> I really did. I'm like, please don't be broken. Yeah, it's for a scratch. Right. Uh, dude, thing swims like a dream. Doesn't go quite as deep as I thought it was going to, but that's okay. It's not a bad thing. Um, still really happy with it. It actually fills kind of a niche spot one of my favorite things for big swim baits like this is fishing crank downs which is why i was so desperate to place well in one of these tournaments so i could have a shot at winning something like this and it actually swims probably three to four feet it's my best guess and i have one that only goes down to like two feet i have one that goes down to five to six feet so now i got one in that mid-range and it's one of the most coveted ones that i've been trying to get my hands on for well too long it took me like yeah, Tiago, I think it like best I can tell three to four feet. The only two times I've had it out now to swim, we've been in some super dark water, so I'm just trying to go up by what I can feel as I'm swimming it. So I don't know. Best guess, but super stoked to have that. Okay, so we got electronics and drop shot fishing. Any other suggestions before we go? We wrap this up. Um, Jim B, I've done okay on the drop shot this summer with like electronics. Is forward facing sonar worth it? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you very much, Tiago. Um, yeah, live sonar is, or forward-facing sonar is absolutely worth every penny. Um, it is it is good stuff. I have fished in other boats with it. it. You know what's funny? Every time someone asks me about electronics on my boat, they're like, what do you have for forward-facing sonar? We don't have I don't. it. I honestly, I, I don't, I don't think this in a negative way like i do in some other things i honestly think that because of how well we've been doing this year and last year people just assume we had forward facing sonar i got 2d sonar i got side imaging i got mega 360 i don't have live i've seen it twice i saw it on on uh tj's boat and i saw it on kyle's boat and i looked at it for about a half a second on both boats <laughs> oh that's pretty neat all right see ya yeah <laughs> That said, if everything goes well with work this year, which right now everything's pointing in the right direction, uh, and I get bonus that I'm hopeful for, that's the plan, is to add active target to my boat this winter. So, fingers crossed. Uh, and then, yes, South Jersey. I'm going to pin that. Fall time swim baits coming soon. We're going to bring the guys from swim bait scrutiny back when it gets a little cooler in here because the last time we had four people in here, it got excruciatingly hot. <laughs> So we'll have them Probably back on. We're going to like talk $40, about that. Forty thousand worth of baits on the table. Yeah, I was sweating. <laughs> hey, can I have one of those? Thanks. So you, it took you know how long it took me to get this, and then like over a year ago, we had those guys in here. They had like ten friggin' pats in the room with us. <laughs> it was like bastards. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, you know what? Hit us up in the comments if you guys made it this far watching on YouTube after the fact after it's gone up. Um, for everybody that watched, everybody that donated into the waffle, uh, congrats again, Tiago. I will message you tomorrow at some point during the day. I know you're busy working too, but we'll get this squared away, and uh, maybe we can just meet up. I don't know, we'll just drop everything off to you, and then uh, we'll get the stuff from Beast Coast shipped out as well. But for everybody else that donated for or went into the raffle, thank you very much. Everybody that listened to us rant and ramble, thank you. Everybody that shared the stream ahead of time, thank you. I didn't quite get to look at the numbers as often as I wanted, but I did see we had one of our highest numbers of active watchers for quite a while, which is good. Mm -hmm. Swinging back in the right direction. Hopefully we have something much more engaging for you, or as engaging for you next week. It's going to be something good, but yeah, big swim baits, any outdoors, that's definitely coming up. I'm excited for big swim bait stuff. I can't wait for the expo. Expo season is around year. the corner. You got to go at all three. Going to the swim bait expo. Yeah, well, maybe. I'm just kidding. I'm going. <laughs> yeah, right, you are. <laughs> but anyway, I can tell you what, we're doing a booth at at least one of them. Oh yeah. So one, we got to figure out which one of those three. Whatever. We'll figure it out. 
well, uh, which one of those three you can go to all three days. So, you know, we're only going to do two. We won't do the swim bait one. That wouldn't make any sense for us to do. But the New England and the New Hampshire one, we'll absolutely be at for a booth. We'll be doing seminars again. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, sorry. I'm interrupting. Please. <laughs> After you, sir. Like always. No, I was just exiting oh. the frame to give you, <laughs> give you the stage. Sorry. Like always. Every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time at youtube.com slash 603 bass we will be there and so will you hopefully goodbye have a good day everybody thank you very much see you next week